I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. For those of you who don't know me, Louis Alvarez was my older brother. He was third in line in the Alvarez family, and I was blessed to be the fourth, the only girl. My name is Ida Lugo. Louis was born in Havana, Cuba, communist Cuba, in October 1965. But before long, he and my two older brothers would receive the greatest gift they've ever received from our parents, freedom. They painfully left behind everyone and everything in the hopes of providing their sons with the opportunity to live and worship without censorship, to live in freedom in the United States of America, a country my father taught us from very early on to love and defend. Little did my parents know that this single act of sacrifice would lay the groundwork for the man their son would become. A man who served, defended, protected till his last dying day. From early on, my brother's instinct to protect led him. I was often told the story of how when anyone approached me, Louis would firmly grip the handle of my stroller take on a soldier's stance and warn, don't touch my baby. He was three and a half. As a teenager, my brother enjoyed a typical life of fun with buddies, sports, first crushes, and first jobs. It was soon after, however, that he began to distinguish himself as someone who marched to the beat of his own drum. After turning 18, my brother came home one day to announce to my parents, without warning, that he had just signed up for the U.S. Marine Corps. Off he went, still wet behind the ears, to serve and defend. The Marine Corps was a good match, a place where honor, courage, and commitment were held in high regard, a place where he knew he could build a better self. His highest call to order was received when Louis became a father for the first time. Not without a little fear, and to the best of his ability, Louis raised his son David. Anyone who knows my nephew will know what an amazing job he and David's mom says he did. They raised a son who recognizes the importance of family bond. Louis went on to meet and marry his wife, Lainey someone who my brother lovingly recognized as a girl who also marched to the beat of her own drum. Together, they proudly welcomed Tyler and Benjamin, sons my brother tried hard to teach the meaning of loyalty, respect, and honor to. It was during this time that my brother would answer his calling to become a member of the New York City Police Department. What he didn't know was that was he was about to discover the largest group of people who followed the same beat, his same cadence. A family who worked towards the same level of excellence in serving and protecting. His career started with uniform patrol at his beloved 108th precinct in Long Island City. He proudly moved on to Queens major case narcotics, bravely taking on undercover work and then finally onto the bomb squad, where in his own words, he joined an elite and special breed. It was during his time in narcotics that our nation faced the tragedy of 9-11. While, while most sat stunned and in disbelief, our city's finest, our city's bravest, our brother Louis, responded without hesitation. He would recount my desperate phone call to him, begging him not to go down there, to stay away. But go he did, and there he would be for the following three months. Jumping ahead almost 16 years, Louis and our family were served the biggest cross God had ever laid on us, Louis's cancer diagnosis. 
and with constant reminders from my incredibly strong mother, we faced each day in the faith that God never sends a cross too heavy to bear. Louis took on that cross in a way so few do, with a tenacity and resilience that even surprised his oncology team. Nevertheless, chemo became his prison, his jail, often isolating him from the world, too sick to engage in the joys of everyday life. And despite a get out of jail free card often being waved in his face, a whole pass to get out of chemo, he firmly declined it each and every time. Did he do that for the glory and attention? Absolutely not. He was way too humble. He did it to battle against his biggest fear, the fear of leaving three sons fatherless. Little did he know, God was at work even amidst his deadly diagnosis. He armed Louis with the grace to begin telling his story, a simple blog on Facebook, this is what he liked to call. Posts he wrote to urge his coworkers and other responders to become registered with the World Trade Center Victims Compensation Fund to safeguard themselves and their families should they be hit with the same diagnosis. Treatment after treatment, my brother updated his friends and shared his experiences with chemo. A fly under the radar type guy, as we know, he always appeared shocked to see the number of people following him and listening to what he had to say. Into his life, God would send angels to inspire Louis to fight the injustices being played out against his fellow first responders. Jeannie Kelly, Matthew McCauley, John Feel, and John Stewart, as well as others, armed my brother with the vehicle used to plea on behalf of those who were not being treated fairly. That's what he was taught. That's what he knew. That's what he always did. And as we all know, despite being in pretty bad shape, he traveled to Capitol Hill to have his voice heard. He wanted to urge our government to do the right thing in protecting its own. It became my, bro my brother's dying wish the legacy he wanted to leave, that the bill protecting the victim's compensation fund be passed. Humble that he was, he had hoped to have some small piece in that. And although that did not happen as quickly as he would have liked, Louis was very grateful to hear about the unanimous vote to pass the bill onto the Senate. As one of my brother's beloved previous partners shared with me, Louis was the quietest man I have ever worked with, but in the end, he made the most noise. Before closing, I'd like to share a very personal experience that took place the night before Louis' death. I woke up to my brother attempting to get out of bed. He was coughing, he was agitated. He told me he had been walking and walking and walking. He wanted to sit in the chair. I called for the nurse who assisted in settling him down. I recounted what he had said. The nurse asked him where, where he had been walking. And with David as my witness, my brother responded, I was walking to find first responders to make sure they get help. How we walk with the broken speaks louder than how we sit with the greatest. To my dear Iris, our family's 1044, our suspicious package, I pray that the angels led you in, just as I know you will be there to lead me in, just as you promised. Luis Gustavo Alvarez, end of watch, June 29th, 2019. Fidelis ad mortem, faithful unto death. Thank you.